This is a courtesy of Mixmag, and this is the following. The UK's strongest ever ecstasy pill found in Manchester Club, right? And if you know anything about pills, you know anything about going out, you would have known and have seen the difference in the last couple of years, especially with the pandemic, especially with the, you know, complications with all the... Um, supply chain you know stuff that's been going on all over the world at the moment um there's been a real shortage of actual good pills out there and on the, on the scene and if you haven't really experienced it yourself then you would have read news reports of people all over the place unfortunately falling ill some of them you know fatally so dying off the back of maybe ingesting pills that were laced with fentanyl or just you know from i would just say um what's to say reckless abandon right when you've been stuck indoors for the past 18 months during lockdown then you're allowed to go back outdoors with no real education and again we don't have great education when it comes to drug safety when it comes to um what do you call it harm reduction and whatnot and just making sure people are safe when they're doing their drugs is more of a kind of punishment um approach that we have in the uk instead of education educating people and making them aware and making them conscious of how to take stuff properly it leads to people going crazy and being a little bit too excessive and then i'm sure there's a group there's a wide i'm sure there's a split no, I'm sure there's a group of people who definitely pass away because of drugs that have been cut poorly because of over issues having supply chains that make people have to cut corners and I'm also definitely sure that people were definitely had to pass away because it just hadn't had a I won't say practice but they hadn't had whatever it needed to be in order to go out and kind of get back on it to that level do you know what I mean they need to kind of ease themselves into it but if you know anything about Brits you know anything about people from the UK we don't ease ourselves into nothing we go straight in hard as possible and unfortunately of course this has some fatal results but it looks like this has all been turned on its head because again like i said before the quality of the pills out there at the moment is terrible i think the drug scene in general is a little bit shaky people are kind of worried about stuff because everything's kind of been cut with fentanyl and whatnot but from what i've heard out there on the streets the drugs the pills especially are not that great they're either really weak or they're really good but there's nothing in the middle beforehand you used to get a lot of mid pills pills that weren't that great but if you had a couple you could probably have a good night but nowadays you might have to buy seven and you might only get high off two because they've been cut with absolute crap or they're just not made that well or you get really high dosage ones that of course are going to cause you trouble and this is a good example of it the uk's strongest of XC pill found in the manchester club so absolutely mad right but it should be surprising though because manchester's on the coast right near near or well, it's nearer a coast than we are here in the uk so there's more avenue or kind of ways to get those kind of things smuggled into those kind of shores first and then by the time they trickle down here to london they've already been boshed and bashed and trampled on and you know and extracted of all their goodness so the following the strongest XC pill ever found in the UK have emerged um, and undif unidentified Manchester Club Vice has reported. I wonder why this is unidentified. I wonder if it's one of the bigger ones or a smaller one. Uh, the Blue Punisher pill, a common shape used across the country, weighed in at a whopping 477 mg, around triple the quadruple strength of a normal pill. Mandrake Drug Analysis Lab in Manchester Metropolitan University tested the pill after they found at a club in the city, concluded their dosage and the strongest ever they found in the country. The record breaking tabs were weighed at 650 in total fucking nuts and this is why when you do go out and you do drugs again i'm not, I, I don't really do pills as much as i used to do in the past when i was mad young um now i kind of you know kind of keep off of those things in general if i need to maybe i would take like a quarter or something but this is why in general if you're gonna go out and take pills as you can see from this pill that someone's holding it looks like a i don't know like a mitsubishi one or one of those ones right but whatever you see a little crack they have there those are usually those little break points that you should use in order to kind of have a safe a safe basically trip if it may be you know does that kind of term you say whatever safe high you kind of crack one and if i was and if it was me especially after the pandemic i would be extra cautious and i would go i would crack it in half and i'd crack it into a quarter and then I'd see how I feel after 20 minutes. Take one, and then if you feel good after 20 minutes, or you need a top up, take the other bit. And usually it kind of kicks in within like, I don't know, 20, I guess, to 20 to, for 20, let's say 20 to 50 minutes, right? In that kind of range. But basically under an hour, you basically start feeling the effects and you can kind of start rolling and go from there. But you don't need to take too much. But people these days just go too crazy and just start ingesting two or three pills at a time. You know, mad drunk, especially in the UK, we tend to get super sloppy when it comes to alcohol. So the combination of those things isn't the best. But this is the reason why people, this is the reason why a lot of people advise people should always take smaller amounts in terms of dosage and then work up to the full because you never know if you're pill because the issue they, they, they have here is one is twofold when you have a pill from what i've understood online when they manufacture this stuff whatever the mdma kind of concoction that is in here there's no kind of 
there's no exact way to kind of make sure the spread of MDMA is even across the entirety of the pill, right? So imagine if this pill is a 200 mg, right? It could, for all intents and purposes, for whatever reason of how it's made and how it's kind of baked, whatever it may be, all the 200 mg could be on one side instead of the other side. So if you go and just take the whole thing, you could be taking, you know, one side, you know, you could be taking maybe double of what is actually in there, or you could be taking half of it, which is a dud. So what you're meant to do is just take a quarter of it and work your way up because you never know how much the actual thing is in terms of dosage. They obviously hypothesize when they, you know, weighing them and kind of making them in the labs, I guess, but there's no way to tell exactly how much is in it. And usually I've always found, um, dealers sometimes undersell what they actually are so you might get one that says 200 mg but it's actually 300 do you know what i mean so it's hard to kind of really be exact on it it continues fears are now mounting over the danger to club goers in north of england with warnings from fiona meesom the director of drug safety organization the loop stating it's likely to be amongst the highest in the world she said that these were the strength pills illustrate just how dangerous the lack of information about mdma and content of pills may can be a lack of information on strength can transform into a pill from benign to deadly the blue punisher pill was found in a batch of super strength pills ranging from 397 mg which is what i'm used to seeing a range i'm used to seeing stuff around the 250 the 180 to 2 180 to 320 saw range um to 470 mg it says here the tabs were seized by security and identified manchester club so crazy right and it's also good to see the security actually passing them on to these drug safety organizations instead of just you know what they usually do is they just pass them on to the staff that work at this place or sell them to other punters it's just it's a slimy mimey world or the other thing i've seen people do which I've heard in other clubs, maybe some clubs I've been at recently, they do a, they do the stuff they do at, in, in Ibiza. Because I've seen videos of it, actually, because I've never been, right? I've never been to Ibiza, but I've seen videos of DC-10. Not videos, yeah, I've seen videos. I've seen videos and I've seen pictures. Because I, I remember when I was browsing, when DC-10 was reopening, just checking on Instagram and seeing what was going on. I remember seeing a post from some guy who was basically taking a picture of a security guard on the dance floor. And the caption was something like, oh my man grips me up on the dance floor the, the, the last year now we look us with buddies i was like grips you up and then i had to kind of read through the comments of what his friends were saying and essentially what goes down in ibiza clubs i guess is because they know british lads like to get on it and they, and they don't believe in going to the toilets and doing bumps right for whatever reason i don't know what's wrong with english people we hate going to the toilets or going somewhere else to go and do our drugs we like to just do it on the dance floor flipping bizarre human beings we are but whatever we're not well trained we're not well uh, we're not cultured in that respect so i guess to security guards in those places know that and because those places you know high ticket bar you know bars are expensive they're not exactly going to chuck you out because essentially they may be throwing money down the drain and they may be passing you onto another club that might make money off you because you're definitely out there to spend money you're not going to go back to your hotel room so what they'll do is that they'll grip you up threaten you your life and stuff you know threaten to take your passport i don't know just do whatever scare tactic they can do you know call the police with the drugs blah blah blah, blah. and then what they'll do is that they'll say you got an option right either we call the police they'll, they'll, they'll see your stuff or you give me 200 euros 100 euros and usually guys and girls that go to like dc10 and stuff aren't going with like 50 euros right you're going with a bit of money you saved up from whatever job you're working at and you're just going to go there to go and you know have bare cocktails eat some great breakfast hang out with your friends on the beach and go and rave so you've definitely got the money. So they'll just swindle you for those kind of things. And, you know, in order to the purposes, if you've got the gear already, 100 euros isn't that much. You know what I mean, um, in order to kind of make sure that you keep your drugs and you also go get allowed to stay in the club. So that's what they usually do. And I know some clubs in the UK have started to do the same thing as well. I guess it's again because of the pandemic and because clubs' attendances aren't as great as they were beforehand. They don't exactly want to chuck you out either. So they would rather let... Because I remember even the other day, some dude... I bumped into said that you know he had a lot of stuff of his seized and he was still let in which is odd isn't it because imagine if you come in with bare shit because i think he had like more than five grams of random stuff that he had on him if you come in with that sort of stuff usually most clubs will be like yeah i don't want you in my club you're already a mess but they still let him in even though they seize these stuff so it's clear that they're kind of you know they're kind of bending the rules a bit taking advantage of the situation because they want to get people in to make sure that they can still spend money at the bar and whatnot 
It continues here. It says Misha also suggested the pill might have been made by mistake, likely by a junior. And she says, I guess it's more likely to be a cock up than intentional. Maybe the boss went out for lunch and junior was left to charge of the pill press and got the consistency wrong, the variation in the width. It's suggesting consistency of amateur pressing. Okay, cool. The average MD made those as an adult is around 150 to 200 mg. Um, Regents test by the UK drug analyst Guy Jones said on the high strength pills is a new world record. Is it possible to write a stronger one? Has ever been made? But a number of pills on 400 mg in a public test result could counted in one hand bloody hell but the unfortunate thing about stuff like this is now dealers all around the country because this is news and it's been you know viral news over the last couple of hours for sure they're going to start marketing their pills as one of the strongest ever jeremy they're going to be calling it what is it um is it a blue punisher what is it it's a punisher pill but yeah blue punisher pill they're going to be calling it a blue punisher pill 477 mg so whoever's got a hold of those is going to still make money so that junior who kind of got you know maybe wrongly dosed the pill isn't going to get in trouble they're especially probably going to get a, a promotion dealers are going to get make a lot of money cup punters are going to be chasing their dealers for that particular dosage because it's a high it's just going to create an entirely horrible secondary market it happens quite often whenever somebody notable dies off the back of pills and stuff or some whatever recreational drug usually the price or usually the dealers market it as whatever this da, 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 the drugs that killed michael k williams over i mean it's horrible but that's basically the life these guys leave and they live on the edge mate they live on the absolute edge but yeah 477 mgmd made pill mate absolutely nuts in it and it's mad because from what i've heard or what i've read online again not an expert but i kind of dived into this super hard when i watched um what's that fucking um tv series on netflix at the moment uh it's a dutch one it's about a dude it's about a pill industry as well a guy that manufactures pills and I think they're now making a prequel to it. But anyway, there was a lot of that. And obviously Gomorra, you know, and obviously Narcos. It got me really interested in the drug trade and all that stuff. And, you know, and the war on drugs in general. I've got many, many books about the entire thing. So I'm, I'd, I'd, I'd say I'm kind of fairly knowledgeable about it. Surface level stuff. Just stuff I've kind of read on books, in books and whatnot. So don't really quiz me on too much shit. But from what I've read, one of the main reasons why the pills are crap nowadays again is because there's been a ban in China for the... Um, component pmk and allegedly that was one of the kind of main components that was used to make mdma supposedly it's a legal thing that is usually used in stuff like perfumes and whatnot and for whatever reason i think either the quantity that you can buy have been reduced legally or it's just an outright ban in terms of how you can buy it. Uh, whatever there's something that's happened to it that's basically stifle how people can make it and whatever um research chemical the um that's the, the r yeah whatever rc version of it they've made isn't as good as the original isn't as good as what pmk is so because of that the quality of the overall mdma and the quality of the pills has gone down really really badly and again i've not done mdma pills in many 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 years but from what i've read a lot of people have said the quality of them isn't as good as they were previously before and a lot of it has to do with this supposed ban on pmk that's been in uh, enacted in china that's now affecting people obviously that are making pills in europe so they're obviously figuring out other ways to get around it and again supply chain issues are affecting people to get stuff in their hands and it's just funny the the unintended consequences of all this stuff and how it's affecting people you know young people all around the country are unfortunately passing away off the back of the bad pills people are getting in trouble it's just, it's just a mad thing mad mad situation but again 477 mg man imagine that that's gonna knock your absolute socks off